you know, with a, with a candlelight waiting for your fireworks to go up having a dinner with everybody else on, on the foot, on the baseball field. But the baseball field really didn't exist like today either, so they were, you know, like stands in a great big open expanse. But hell going to do. The potato no, chips! Potato chips, folks. Potato chips have come a long way. I know. Basically, they come a long way. I mean, my family made potato chips. You know? Okay, oh, this is German related too because of the potatoes. Yeah, well, um, oh. uh, actually, the, um, basically, it's a variation of the French fry. But my guess is more Irish. I would bet um. the Irish because the Irish, Irish basically yeah. lived off of potatoes. Mm. They take uh, their little potato pillar and go like this and then dump the stuff in salt and water because you know what you could do with it then? What? Uh, this is from my grandmother. I'm giving you some more history. My grandmother said they would dump it off. Her father would, and, his, and her uncle would dump it in the boiling hot water, oil with the salt in it. They would then pack it up in their kits and take it with them and they'd eat it. Uh, that, that so they could eat. take it with them? They could take it with them. Because potatoes... You As couldn't a, take your potato, but you could take a, a French fry. You, could take a, you, could take a, uh, you couldn't take a French fry, but you could take one of these. You could take a whole bunch of these with you and have your potatoes when it was time to go to the lunch. So, uh, see? But, well, but, they're saying that as a world food, this is second to rice in world consumption. Because it's the, most simplest, it's the most simplest thing in this world to make. It's, it, I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, it is simple. Like, you take a potato, you peel it, and most of the people don't even, true, true ones of these aren't even peeled. They just slice them, mm -hmm. dump them in hot oil with, with uh, salt in it, and then let them dry. Well, That's they're it. a huge snack food. That's it. But it's also a substance for like the, like I said, the Irish, but it, here it says, you know, basically go to 1853, Saratoga Springs, New York. As the world potato ship the second human consumption only rice, as a thin salt of crisp chip, they are America's favorite snack food. Potato chips originated in New England as one man's variation of the French fried potato, and the production was a result of not a sudden stroke of culinary invention, but a fit. <laughs> they got somebody got pissed off. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like this was the summer of 1853, American Indian George Crumb was employed as the chef at the Elegant Resort in Saratoga Springs. Uh, uh, on Moon Lake York. Lodge, yeah, like that. On Moon Lake Lodge, his restaurant menu were French fried potatoes prepared by Crum in a standard thick cut French style that popularized in French. Oh. Pomme de fer. Yeah. Uh, so they just made them thinner. They say, uh, but J that, uh, Thomas Jefferson, the ambassador, loved the thing and brought them over. Ever since Jefferson brought the recipe to America, so French fried gas, the dish was popular on a serious So it, it actually originated kind of from the French fry, and then they made it a thinner French fry, right? They said he got pissed off at somebody saying they were too thick for his liking, so he made them thinner, but they oh. didn't meet the approval. So then he really got pissed off and made something this thin, and the guy liked him. Oh, really? <laughs> and they... He got, I think what it said, he got stuck making them. The plan backfired. The guests were ecstatic over the brown paper thin potatoes and other diners requested it began to appear in the menu as Saratoga chips, a house specialty. Soon they were packaged and sold in New England. And basically, eventually, he featured, he opened his own restaurant featuring the thing. And, but they said it was the invention of the mechanical potato peeler that actually moved them along. Oh. Isn't that something? Oh. You know, we're, 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 you know, we're going to, I'll give you some of the history. I know, well, you know, I like potato chips. <laughs> I, I know, here we go. We're basically, here you go. For, for several decades after the creation, they were largely, uh, were largely by a northern dinner dish in the 1920s. Oh. Yeah. In the, oh, actually, they were basically a large dinner dish. Yeah. Could you imagine, you know, like a plate of french fries? Mm -hmm. You get a plate of potato chips. Well, they were especially at Oh, in the 1920s, Herman Lay, oh, like his in Lay's potato chips, mm -hmm. a traveling salesman in the South helped potato popularize the food from Atlanta to Tennessee. Lay peddled potato chips to southern grocers out of the trunk of his car building a business and a name that would become synonymous with a thin, salty snack. Lay's potato chips became the first successfully marketed national brand. And in 1961, Herman Lay, to increase his line of goods, Merged his company with Frito, is it Frito Lay? Yep. That's where it came out, huh? Yep. The Dallas produ based producer of such snack foods. Oh. Which is now a division of Pepsi. Yeah. And Americans consume more potato chips. 
Oh, and Fritos and french fries. Did any other people in the world? A reversal from colonial times. Oh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like that. That reversal from colonial times when wingers can sign potatoes largely to pigs and pigs as fodder. And while eating, the two were shortened a person's life, not because potatoes were fried in fat and cows were salt in today's heart condition, I know. Uh, but because the spud frequently consumed with passion uh, and are tossed out by someone as satisfying as sex. Touted by someone as satisfying as sex, which meant they didn't find them very satisfying. Mm -hmm. They remember doing it, they didn't find sex satisfying. No, I'll just tell you how my, how the Irish came about it. Like I said, the Irish took them, took them because they couldn't make potatoes. Mm -hmm. they, remember, this is during the Irish potato famine when all the Irish are coming Oh, to this you know what? And they were having problems with uh -huh. it. They were trying to preserve their potatoes so mm -hmm. they could eat it as something that they were used to. That's right. They were used to potatoes because that was their main form of substance in Ireland potatoes. Potatoes, every way you could think of. And this was just a means that they could, you know, take potatoes with them because they didn't allow, the Irish weren't allowed to go out and do a lot of things. They could get their beer, which comes up next. They have beer and potato chips. Hmm. But, you know, beer is an oldie, though. An oldie, but a goodie. I mean, we're talking um, <laughs> 3,000 years before the birth of Christ in Mesopotamia. What? Uh, and, uh, it is. Yeah, it was 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. Basically, in Mesopotamia, 4,000 year old clay tablet indicates the brewing was highly respected profession. Okay. And the Chinese brewed it called Kui some 5,000 years ago. 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. Yeah. But you got to understand, 4,000, in Mesopotamia, a 4,000 year old tablet, that's Mesopotamia. That was, Mesopotamia was like 5,000 years ago. So this makes it 9,000 years old. Oh, really? They said in Mesopotamia, a tablet was found. Oh. A four thousand year old tablet was found in Mesopotamia. Wow. That's nine thousand now. So basically, I love the in Babylon, the ancient brewers were priestess, the goddess Ceres and Nakosi were patrons of beer, and certain types of beer were reversed, were reserved exclusively for the temple. Anybody seen the um, the um, you know the Ten Commandments? Where they're busting into the granary, uh, the granary, and the uh, and taking the grains and the hops out that yeah. were meant for the brew of the gods. Yeah. They were talking about Monty's Bowser beer, of course. Well, my guess is they probably had it set aside and somebody forgot about it and it fermented. No doubt. No. You know they were storing grain. <laughs> what? Uh, basically, Babylonian beers. Then like it. Basically, Babylonian beers were shown to be dark, dark beer, dark beer, pale beer, red beer, threefold beer, beer with a head, beer without what? a head. It also recognizes that beer was sipped through a straw in the case of the day, the case of royalty of gold and straw. Boy, that sounds like modern beer, doesn't it? I know, it really does. But this was from, this is Babylonian beers they were doing? Babylonian. Well, in the world is a threefold beer? I mean... Uh, I guess three right. different types of beer poured into one bowl, you know, so I like that. But uh, 3,000 year old beer mugs were discovered in Israel in, in the 1960s. See, this is really unusual because I would have thought beer came from Germany. Yeah, but they say that King David and King Saul were drinking beer. Yeah. Well, I think that beer Germany usurped it because uh, uh, here we go. We got the Egyptian 5,000 years ago. Beer was already an important food item on their daily diet. Remember, I told you. The grains and the hops for making the drinks of the pharaohs and the gods. Only the priests and the pharaohs and the gods were supposed to drink that stuff. It's called beer. <laughs> oh, but here's what's unusual. And it was part of the basic diet for the nobility as well as the peasant. Um, but as well as being a drink, beer was also a medicine. Yeah. Which is actually kind of unusual. Okay, we'll tell you because how do you talk to Monty? Well, after you've had a case of this... You understand every single word that Monty says to you. Oh, is that because you're drunk? Well, I like this part. It says, a medical document which was written in about 1600 B.C. found about, lists about 700 prescriptions which contain the word beer. Yeah. So if you're thinking, just have a drink of beer and you'll feel better. Yeah, because it had the alcohol content in, it, in cases, I would assume, worked as a bit of a tranquilizer for people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, they, I mean... I have tasted European beer and Asian beer that was, you could strip the varnish off of wood with that beer, the alcohol was so strong in it. <laughs> you know, you think vodka is bad, 
Wait till you get yourself a can of, of a, you know, like a 160 proof beer. Really? Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. So, uh, basically, I like the Book of the Dead. You know, that Book of the Dead they mention in the Mummy movies has reference to the beer in it, too. Oh, it does? Yep. Other references of beer from Egyptian time include mention of beer brewed from barley in Egyptians, Book of the Dead. <laughs> and wall hangings. Yeah. And then we get to the, it was the Egyptians who wrote, who reputedly taught the Greeks how to brew, brew, brew beer. We haven't gotten to the Germans yet. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably going to get to the Christian era. But, uh, uh -huh. Roman, okay, basically the Greeks in turn taught the Romans, the, and Julius Caesar following the faithful crossing toasted his officers in beer. Mm -hmm. That's you know they, they crossed over into the Germanic areas, folks. Mm. They took the they, they took, they the, took beer the beer with them. Yes, the Greeks in turn taught the Romans to brew, and, uh, and basically the Romans then showed the savage tribes in Britain the art of brewing. And uh, <laughs> I love that. They basically the Celtic and Teutonic people of Great Britain and Central Europe. Central Europe meaning the Germanic tribes. Oh. Yeah. So well, now we get the Christians though. I like that. You're getting at, you know, actually you're getting medieval times. Uh, Boy, they, it's beer throughout the ages. Well, for 9,000 years we start with first reference. The earliest reference to beer is 9,000 years old. Every country in the world has brewed beer. Here's some fun part is monks often built the first breweries and pioneers. That's <laughs> pioneers. The monks! <laughs> they built wineries. They built, I mean, they were the first people to open, you know, little places, little inns and stuff. And, well, in the Dark Ages, it's like all the monks were the ones that could read, right? That's right. Three, now, this is interesting. Three Christian saints are listed as patrons of brewery. All distinguished members of the Christian faith. St. Augustine of Hippo. I know. I love author it. Author of The Confession. you got to love the last one, though, which is, I love the last one. You get the first St. Luke the Evangelist. And here's the good one, folks. This one is... Uh, St. Nicholas of Myra, better known as Santa Claus, was one of those people. That's why he was a jolly old man with the red oh, nose. That's why the, uh, the patron of brewing, Santa Claus. The patron of brewing is also Santa Claus. This is a good one. I like that. <laughs> Other saints linked with brewing was uh, St. Uh, Columban, <laughs> missionary work in Germany. Uh, found people preparing uh, to consume a cast of beer in a ceremony to a pagan god. He blew upon the case which fell apart and the crowd became passionate. He miraculously increased the small amount of beer left. He, he is, uh, Saint Bright is credited with changing water in the beer to feed lepers. She personally brewed out at Easter time to supply all the churches in the neighborhood. Basically, we've got a lot of drunken, you know, <laughs> a lot of drunken it's saints. It's for festivities. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. The, the saints were celebrating. Uh, St. Yeah. Mungo, the patron saint of Scotland's oldest city, Glasgow, established a religious brotherhood there in 540 A.D. And they started brewing to supply the others. Yeah. We say Glasgow is the... Regarded as the oldest, is the is the oldest brewing area in the whole world. Is it Glasgow is? still continually? Oh, and St. Patrick, as in St. Patrick's Day, I'm presuming. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Numbered among his household, a brewer, a priest called Meskin. Isn't that a, yeah? That's St. Patrick. I have a feeling St. Patrick was brewing himself. Yeah, I remember this. Why else would they have St. Patrick's Day? That's the day? Irish. The Irish are brewing. The Germans are brewing. The Italians are brewing. The Scots are brewing. The uh, Russians are brewing. They basically... You know, they, anybody that had grains. Okay. Uh, uh, let me tell you, I don't think it says it here, but you know, my father... <laughs>